All right, Chris, so we're beginning to tape now. So you were going to start by talking about your family and how they came to Guestingthorpe. My um, mother's family are from Great Henny. Uh, they're the Nears family, who were wheelwrights and carpenters in the Great Henny area. And um, they can be traced back to the 1600s. Um, they were the original pe people that came to Guestingthorpe out of my family. Uh, during, at the end of the 19th century, my great-grandfather and great-grandmother moved to Wilston in London, and my great-grandfather worked on the Central London Railway, which is, uh, I think, the, an underground railway, and I, I think he worked in the carriage works, probably as a carpenter. Uh, whilst they lived in Wilston, they had two children that I know of. They had um, my grandmother, Lillian, and my uncle Cecil, who was Cecil Nears, who was Arthur Nears' father. Um, sometime, probably in the 1910s, 1920s, they moved back to Great Henny, and they lived in a couple of railway carriages uh, along Henny Street. And sometime after that, I believe that they had another daughter who was my Aunt Lett, who is Mick Smith's mother. Um, and the first of the Nearses who came to Guestingthorpe was Cecil Nears, and he worked, uh, took a job with the Oates family. I'm not sure whether we were working for Brian Oates or for... Is it Caroline Oates, the other one? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, but anyway, he worked at Overhaul, but and uh, they lived at uh, Tuckland's. Right, the fruit farm, Ben's, as yeah. was, yeah. It's gone off, Ben. No, it's hadn't. <laughs> and, <laughs> so he was the first one who came to Gessenthorpe anyway, and in 1931, Arthur was born. And at some time, my great-grandmother followed on. Whether he, she came with my, whilst my great grandfather was still alive or not, I don't know. But she came and she lived at um, Pump Yard, in on the very end one, next to the road. And sometime after that, Lee met Mick Smith's father, me, and me uncle Luke, or me uncle Les, or some people call him. And they lived at Pump Yard as well. So they were the first members of my family to come <coughs> to Guestingthorpe. But my mother and my grandmother, oh, I'll have to stop there, Ben, because I've got the mother on my head. It was going well. Is it on? Yes, it's now on. So whilst my grand great-grandmother and great-grandfather lived in Wilson, my grandmother married a man from Wilsdon, Phil Montague, who was a bricklayer. And when great-grandmother and great-grandfather moved back to Henny, grandmother, I think, stayed in Wilsdon and lived there with him. And uh, then they moved to um, Watford, or Garston, near Watford. And that's where my mother was born. And... Yeah, so during that time, um, my mother used to visit Gestenthorpe. I think she used to come and stay with my great grandmother. Um, this was before the war, and then on the last day of the war, the whole family were due to move from Watford to Parkgate Farm, and they couldn't get a train because none of the trains were running because it was a uh, the E day. So. They actually had came. They had to come the day after that, uh, and then they lived at Parkgate Farm. I don't know which cottage they lived in. One of the, one of the two cottages down. And my grandfather worked for the Ruffles family. Whether he worked at Parkgate or whether he worked on the farm or whether he worked as a bricklayer, I'm not quite sure. And sometime after that, then they he took on the landlordship of the Belsham Bells. <laughs> And it was during the time when they were at the Belsham Bells that my mother married my father. And they were married at Belsham Water Church. 
And they used to call it the Belsham Bells, did they? Belsham Bells. That, that, re that reads well, rather than well, the Six we Bells. Well, we Bells. Yeah, anyway. a bit we like the Wickham Wilson, Ship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then um, sometime in the 50s, I think, they moved to um, Gardner's Cottage at the Hall in Gessenthorpe, and Grandfather became the um, gardener at Gessenthorpe Hall for the cooks, the Winners family. So now you said you're going to talk about your father's family. Yeah, my father's okay. side of the family were from the Brandon Long Melford Subbury area, and we can also trace them back to the uh, 1600s. Wow. And um, my grandfather was born in Brandon Wood, uh, probably one of the last people to be born in Brandon, you know, when, in that, when it was a village, I guess, then. Um, and... I don't know where my father met my mother, probably in a pub somewhere. And he joined the Navy. And while he was in, in the Navy, us children came along, my two sisters, Denise, Wendy, and I was... <coughs> and there goes my dog. <coughs> I'll tell you more about my grandfather. He was... My grandfather... My, my, my father was born in a little cottage next to the Blackbirds in Bulmer, in Bulmer Street. And he was one of eight... <coughs> And my grandfather worked on a fashion tackle for Spencer Co. at Brickwall Farm in Bulmer. And my father always tells me that he got made redundant overnight and they had to leave the house and move out almost straight away. And then they moved up to the Fox, a little cottage behind the Fox in Bulmer. That and must have been nice. Yeah. And then after that they moved down to Sudbury and my grandfather worked for Arlington Motor company, and he uh, he was a mechanic working on the on lorries, I think, down there. But anyway, during that, my father and mother then moved into a little cottage, which was owned, I think, was owned by the hall, which is now called Tun Cottage, the thatch one on the, you know, where it is, don't you? And um, that's where all, all us three children were born there. <sighs> right, you have to stop me. Now. Okay. Be getting. Oh, this is moving. You said you might be able to do your earliest memories earliest of memories. guesting for I yeah. vaguely remember the um, Gussie's cottage in Pump Yard, the end one, catching light and burning down. I vaguely remember that. And I think I have a vague remembrance of them to go to the Nice family while it was on fire. But whether that's right or not, I, don't, I think it is right. Um, he, was, he was apparently drying off some mats and he set fire to the house anyway and, he, and it was burnt down. And, I, and that was... A burnt out shelf for the until they pulled the pump yard down, was and it? that was an old cottage, wasn't it? Well, Tacked it was onto the, the edge, yeah, it was, the end yeah, of the row. The and did that take the rest of pump yard with it? No, or what? no, no. There, was, there was just that one burnt down, the rest of them was still there. And my, my grandmother was still living in the end one. And, um, oh, and um, Lenny Martin was living in one of them as well. And, and why, why I think did the others yeah. were empty? Why did they d demolish those then? Why did they demolish yeah. them? I don't really know, really. I think Dix, right. I think the cooks sold them off and the Dixies demolished them and rebuilt them, didn't they? Right. And they were much pleasanter looking houses then than they are now. <laughs> You're going to get sacked like Gary Lineker, <laughs> yeah. the controversial yeah. talk. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember that. And then the other things I remember, I do remember we used to go to Lenny Martin's and have ginger biscuits occasionally when, when us three children were really young. And... Um, I vaguely remember the old lady living next door to us as well. Uh, apparently, my mother said she always thought the house was haunted, but it was, the cottage was two then, it's now one. And then after that, uh, when I was very young, we moved to the foundry, foundry house. and um, On the corner? On the corner, well, yeah. yeah. And I remember then, mother worked at the fruit farm, Tuckland's fruit farm, picking apples, and I remember going on the back of her, her bike, with Tina Sanford and Tina Sanford's mum, and um, going down to the uh, to the orchard, and that really don't remember much else. And that was seasonal school. work, was it? The apple picking? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They probably did pruning in the winter as well. Right. right. And I don't remember much else from before I went to school. Really, I was chatting in handy yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah, really. yeah. Okay, well, we're 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 now. On air, as they say. Yeah. So, I, 
remember starting school, and I think I started in the September, and there was four. There was only, this was Bournemouth School, mm-hmm. and not the old Bournemouth School. This was the new Bournemouth School. I think my sister actually went to the old Bournemouth School and the new Bournemouth School, but it was the new Bournemouth School that I went to. And there was four of us started on that day. One was Ian Theobald, who came from Bournemouth. One was Timmy Gifford, who came from Henny. And the other fellow, I think his name was Colin Hay, but I don't know where he came from. And there was, the, and we four started in September. And then I think the other, they must have had two intakes. Ah, we yeah. were one, and then a lot more people came after Christmas, I think. Right, right. Because we were the older ones in that year. Right. So, And we used to go on an old bus, a real grumpy old bus driver, who wore one of those, who wore a bus driver's cap. Oh, yeah. And it was one of them long nose things, what you see on the Centurion's film. An old long nose Oh, right, yes. Old long nose Bedford or something. Yeah. And, and we used to have to go all, to, all the way around Borley, and we used to go up the hill into Borley from the bottom of Seven Forms Hill, and the old bus could hardly get up to the top, you know, it used to crawl up there. But it was a long old way round, we had to take a long way round to get to Bournemouth School. And my first teacher at Bournemouth School, was name was Mrs Moody, her name was, and Basil Slaughter was the headmaster. And there were three classes, so I don't know how many children, they were doing only about 60 children there, I suppose. Right. Back then. And, um, did you enjoy the bus ride, going back to the bus ride? Or can't you remember? No, just... I can't really remember, but I no. guess I did. I guess we, we probably enjoyed coming back more than we enjoyed going. Right. <laughs> okay, I've turned it off now, I think. No, I haven't. And you were going to say you were going to talk about your um, what you got up to, like Huckleberry Finn of guesting <laughs> Thorpe, or whatever it was, by the Bel- with the Belgian Brooks did I remember the... we were a scruffy old bunch, really, yeah. compared to what children are nowadays. In all their flash trainers, and we everything we had came from jumble sales. Right. If you look at pictures of us back then, you know, all our, the knees were hanging out of our trousers and oh, and you had scruffy old boots and t-shirts and everything. But everybody was the same, so it didn't, you know, it didn't. Uh, nobody looked any different to anybody else, really. Um. So my, my first friend really was Michael Dar, who who lived at the um, he lived with his uncle Ernie, and his grandmother on the um top of Soppy Road in one of the um in one of the um, council bungalows. And, uh, and I remember about him, they used to have a pet fox. His name was Sandy, and it, it had a kennel that lived there. They, it lived outside in a kennel, but it never ever went in the kennel. It burrowed underneath, and it lived in the burrow underneath the <laughs> Can I ask, They used to take it for walks on a... Did you? Yeah. Well, we did, didn't, but yeah. they'd take it for walks and, and leave. Were those bungalows then, did, have, did they have families in them? Because um, now they're mostly old people, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, this one did, but I think yeah. probably his, his grandmother lived there and she was a right yeah she was a, a um, an old lady you know and uh they had a lot of motorbikes his, his um his uncle sort of collected old motorbikes and they had sort of shed pools of old motorbikes and i remember his his uncle jimmy worked on a farm in borley and he died and i think he might i got feeling he died when he was driving the combine actually he was on the combine i, I could be wrong um, and that was his uncle Jim, and then his uncle Billy moved in with her widow. So Michael was left with Ernie and his grandmother. But Michael was my first son. Um, well, that's what the Bible says you should do. If your, I think, if your brother, if the, if the husband dies, then the brother's got to marry the widow. Oh, I'm not well, sure. Well, that's maybe that's what they did. I think. Yeah. <laughs> But what else can I remember of those days? I remember the off license at Scarpers on top of Never Hill. I remember the um, the shop being open opposite the forge. But that was a long way away. That shop, you know, Scarpers was quite close to us. And we, well, what Scarpers? No, tell Scarpers me. Scarpers was the off license. Was was it called Scarpers? Or yeah, was that yeah. his nickname? Yeah. Well, his name was Scarper. We always called it Scarpers. Right. And tell me about that. Would you mean? You know, what was that like? Could, could you you could buy drink at any age? You could, could you buy beer there? Yeah, at any age. Yeah, you go out there and say it was for your dad. And he'd, yes. Yeah. Let's yeah. Have it to you, yeah. And they'd serve um, Green King. And you could get bottles of Abbott and you get bottles of Harvest. Do you remember Harvest? No. Green King, you wouldn't remember Green King much, would you? I do. I remember and Abbott. Bert, Burton's yeah. Ale, which was a dark one. Harvest right. Ale, which was a sweet dark one. Right. And Abbott, they'd sell as well. And, right. And a Pal Ale, I guess. And you, did you did you go and drink it on, on the grass outside or what? Yeah, we'd, we'd take it back to the play. This is when I was in my teens. We'd take it back to the playfield. field and... Right. Yeah, we drink it down there. Right. Yeah. 
but um, you could, you could, um, well, I don't know what actually, you get all sort of simple sort of foods from there. They had blocks of cheese, what he'd cut with the cheese wire. Right. Yeah, the cheese wine, they'd cut bits off for you yeah. and everything, you know. And um, he cellar was to the left, and he'd sort of, you'd ask for some beer, and he'd scuttle off into the cellar. And, and did he, did he get it from, did he get it in, apart from the bottles, did he get it, did he give it, did you bring in containers like jugs? No, or? it was just no. bottles. It was just bottles, yeah. Bottles, yeah, yeah. There. I think we we used to drink shandy out there. Shandy bass you could get. Right. We used to drink shandy from there. I think I'm not sure whether you could get Corona bottles from there. Right. I mean Corona bottles back then you could get money back for them. That's true. Was it threepence or we something? We were forever yeah. hunting in the ditches and that for Corona bottles. Yes. We didn't find many. <laughs> <laughs> and you get, yeah, you could get some money back on them, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> um. So so that was that place, and but he, he did a he did um basically alcohol and and a few other things. Yeah. 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 The only yeah. interesting thing about Scarborough, he never had a car. Right. So he couldn't drive. And he, he used to go down to Sudbury probably on a Thursday or something with a with a Polish fellow who lived in Sudbury Road. Right. Who had a, who had a Reliant Robin. And he used to park that in the Pound Farm. Right. This, this old Reliant Robin. Well, they kind of got many goods in the Reliant Robin. Did they? they <laughs> I don't up? think he went to stock his no. shop. I think they no. just did their, their shopping, I suppose. Right. But Mr. Mr. Scarper. And I think they closed about 1980 sort of time. Didn't right. They? Did I? Yeah. yeah. And, share. and I don't remember the other off license, the one down Moat Farm. I don't remember that. Right. Because um, it was too far away. I mean, that was the other end of the world for us. Yes. Yes. Uh, over there. That was the one by the, what had been the compasses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, by the moment. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't even remember that being there. And I think I closed in about 1968, so it was open when I was a child. But right. I don't, I don't remember it. And all. just carrying on from there, did you have your own zone? Because I quite remember strongly when I was young, various things. You didn't think of it as a zone, but places you went to and places you didn't go to. Yeah. How did you? How did guesting Thorpe? What was your well, we, range? We, in we this? generally we generally played around the playing field. Cause right. Obviously, we had the playing field, uh, the pound farm. We played on the pound farm quite a lot. Right. Um, it, we in the buildings. You could never get into the big barn much. It was always locked. But we got into. All the did other... you get up to mischief? That's a stupid well, question. I don't think we no, you were did, harmless, were you? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 My friend Michael used to get up there to like mischief quite a bit. Right. Um, my dad was always at war with Michael. Right. And, he was um, a bad influence. No, he wasn't. <laughs> I think my dad thought he was. But my dad really liked him. Yes. But they were forever seemed to be at war with each other. I know. Oh, right. Why. Right. Um. I don't know what he read, but Michael used to get up to some bloody scrapes, yeah, yeah. So um, that was, and um, we played there. We played down Hickson Hill quite a bit in the old um, pit down there. Right. Uh, we played. We played it. Where, uh, where's Where's that pit? Down on the way to Yeldon, what we call Hickson Hill, just past the house on top of the hill. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Hickson yeah. Hickson Hill. Yeah. Um, I see down down by the brickyard. No, no, that way. Oh, <laughs> let's not get to my geography. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, right. So we played, yeah, yeah, we yeah. played there. We and um, but that was our range, really. We didn't go anywhere else much. We used to play at the um, we used to play at the hall. We used to play in the hall grounds quite a lot. Not not in the sort of in front of the house or anything, but because my big granddad was the um. Gardener lived in Gardner School. Yes, we could play behind there. They didn't mind you. They no, were they were no, liberal, of course, they didn't mind children no. at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could virtually do what they wanted, really. Yeah, they didn't seem to mind what yeah. we did, really. Yeah. Um. So we played there. We played in the woods behind Foundry Cottage quite a lot. Right. That was one of our other places. The pond, the the waver, what we called the waver. Where's that? To, the big pond in front of the hall. All oh, right. We yeah. Always, that was usually a stagnant old pond then. Yeah. But we used to play there quite a lot. Uh, yeah, in all them sort of places. We we didn't go much further than that, really. Right. Occasionally we'd go to the Laveswood. Right. But only very occasionally. Yeah. Um, hardly ever came down to the barracks much. Not not when I was really young. I, I did more when I was a teenager. Yeah. Um, Eric Ripon Gary used to live at the barracks, and he's a mate of mine, and he used to come down here. And then at the homestead, the Osbournes lived at the homestead here. <coughs> and they had um, Graham and Steve and Osborne, were friends of mine, and they used to... Um, Drive cars around here, where we sit now. They used to drive drive cars around here. So <laughs> we'd come down here and knock about with them. Uh, this was a small holding then, wasn't it? Yeah, well, not yeah. really. Well, it's no. much the same as what it is now, really. Right, right. Um, but that was when I was in my teens. When I was before before secondary school, we hardly sort of went any further than the playing field, really. Right. Didn't get much further. When harvest time was about, obviously we knocked around in the fields quite a bit then. Yeah. We, we was. You see children in the fields then, but you don't see them in the fields anymore, do you? And what about just going a bit further? Do you ever 
Go, do you go to Sudbury on a Saturday or anything like that? Or? And the only time I ever went to Sudbury is if I had to go to the dentist. Right. And that was on Thursday. We had a bus to Sudbury on a Thursday and a bus to Sudbury on a Saturday. And there was a bus to Halstead and Bradley on a Tuesday. And they were only sort of three buses. Were those Bluffies buses or somebody no, no, else? No, no, no. They were, they were um, Hedigan Omni buses. Right. Uh, I think they must have all been here. I can't remember they were all Hedigan Omni. Certainly the one that went to Halstead was a head, Hedigan. Uh, and and you, did you went? Did you go to Halstead more often than you went to Sudbury? No, no? no always Sudbury. I never went to Halstead. Right. So you were a real village child. Yeah, well, everybody to was the same. Nobody ever went anywhere yeah. really. And you just felt that was it. You, yeah. I mean, not that saying was your all, world really. Yeah, and you didn't feel. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That was, that was yeah. your world. And then if yeah. anybody went to London, yeah, it was a big event. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, a whole village would hear about it. So and so I've been <laughs> to London. Nobody ever went there. It was like, <laughs> And um, what about and I remember, like, yeah, I'll tell you yeah. one thing I do remember, yeah. I remember people's cars as well. Right. Because when pe people had a car, well, not everybody had cars then, but when people had cars, they had them for a long while, and you can even remember what makes they had. Yes. Yeah. You know, I remember Charlie Chatters always, he lived in Sopley Road, he used to park his car near the pond on the crossroads, and um, that was a Morris or an Austin 1100. And I remember that always been there. And I remember I was with my friend Mark, one day we were playing, knocking around there, and I think he threw a stone at me, or I might have thrown a stone at him, and that smashed the front windscreen. <laughs> because uh, <coughs> he obviously never found out who did it. You scarped it. You scarped it pretty quick. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I remember him having that. I remember Sewell Reeve, who lived next door to us, he had an Austin Allegro, I think. He always drove Austins, and he used to park his car in a little shed in the pound farm. <coughs> my father had a couple of Vauxhall, Vauxhall Victors, and he used to park, there used to be a asbestos garage on the pound farm, and he took that over, and he used to park it in there. So it's funny how you remember people's cars from all the way back there. There was Nurse Brown, who lived in one of the um, bungalows. She had a Black Morris minor, like all nurses had. Uh, and yeah, yeah, it's funny what you remember, sort of silly little things like that. So, okay, you never got into any huge scrapes? Not, you care to not repeat? really no, massive no. ones. I never broke my arm or any broke any legs. No. I never fell out any trees that I can remember. What about... We always climbed trees, but I don't right. remember falling. What about the local policeman and stuff? Uh, was, was we there... hardly ever saw him, but there was... Um, he was from Belgium, wasn't he? Right. He, his name was <coughs> Lindsay Smith. Right. And he was a Belgian St. Paul's policeman, and he'd come through in his car occasionally. And um, we always thought we'd get nicked for not having any lights on our push bikes, or we'd often we ride two ups on the push bikes, and we right. thought, oh, you'll get. No, I don't think he ever would have um, nicked you for it, but we was always we thought we might do. Yeah. One thing we did have, oh, I do remember on the playing field, we had a legendary dog called Buckhurst Dog, <laughs> and that and that lived in uh, Buckhurst lived in the house where Roger Goldsmith lived. Right. Um. Oh, what's what's it called? Roger's house. You're asking it's the wrong person. Ashley, is it? And it's it, not all. Oh, it's, it's Ashley. Ashley Cottage. Yeah. Ashley Cottage. Yeah, yeah. Where Buckhurst used to live there, and they had this crazy dog, and it was just called. We always, children always thought, look out, it's Buckhurst dog, and sometimes it would escape from the garden and chase us around the playing field, and we always seemed to make out, you know, it was a vicious beast. But right. I don't. I'm not sure whether it was. I don't think it ever bit anybody, but it was sort of yeah, a legendary Buckhurst right, dog. Right, Buckhurst dog. <laughs> okay. So we just uh, we just rattle on then. Yeah. The okay. Yeah. 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 You're rattling on all that old crap, really. But so you can ask me. Something you're on else. air. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're going to ask me something else, aren't you? I was going to ask you. You're talking. Are you thinking you're going to talk about the farmers oh, and people who worked on the farms? Yeah. 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 Okay. So well, back then, I mean, every farm sort of had to. Were, were still most farms were still going concerns, and they had. A couple of boats work on them, most of them. I remember a fellow called Strawberry who worked for Wilfred Teverson. He lived in, um, Wilfred had a, 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 one of the bungalows still belonged to Wilfred then, I think. And and he, and this bloke. And he drove a Reliant Robin as well. <laughs> his name was Strawberry. But he, I think he could have a real red face, we called him Strawberry. But didn't he hate being called Strawberry? I don't know. Because I, don't, I don't, don't remember Arthur Nears tell us the story. No, this was a different Strawberry, I think. Oh, right. The other well, strawberry you're thinking about drove a bus, didn't he? Yes, and he bus. actually... Yeah, there was a different strawberry. He stopped, didn't he? He said, anyway, the next one that calls me, calls me strawberry, I'm going to stop. So he stopped the bus 
at um, North End, didn't he? And they all piled into the pub. <laughs> well, that was a different strawberry. Yeah, okay. A different strawberry. Yeah. Okay. This was a different strawberry. And strawberry had a friend called Basic Barry. Basic Barry. Yeah, and he he worked. Why was he basic? because he, he was a bit basic. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he he worked on Weathersfield Airdrome, and right. And uh, one day he stole lots of petrol from Weathersfield Airdrome, and when the police came to uh, came after him anyway, he um he stayed with Strawberry. I think he lived with Strawberry. He poured it all over the um bank in front of the co- in front of the bungalows on Sudbury Road. He poured away all the petrol. And then the, the fire brigade had to come along and they had to douse all the, uh, the top of the um, bank in front of the bungalows with foam and everything because of this petrol that Basic Barry's name was. And anyway, that's, that's, that's beside the point. That's about, amusing. It's we're talking about stop. farmers. Yes, farmers. Who worked on the farm. What you could say is the farms that were in Guestingthorpe at that point. Yeah, the, well, yeah. the farms that were in Guestingthorpe. And um, for, for Harold, Ashley's father, um, Chief Rip and Gow, lived in the barracks he worked for him and Paul Mann from Belsham when they worked he was the Manchester. one that Charles. discovered or was it, instrumental yeah, in discovering yeah. the Roman yeah. remains yeah and um, Pryors Wilfred Pryors men my uncle Les McSmith's father he worked for the for them George Kemp worked for them and oh, there was a fellow who worked in Damon lived in Damon's house worked for him his name was I think his name might have been Smith, but I can't really remember. I do remember him. And then the Knots had a fellow called Berry worked for them. He lived in uh, where Matt first lived, Rectory Farm. Right. And Russell Meakin's father and grandfather worked for them. So they, he had three or four people work on the farm for them back then. So there was sort of like 10 or 12 people still worked in on farms in the village right. when I was a child. The other big employer was Rippers at Eddingham. Right. And um, Ernie Dar worked for the Rippers, and they'd, they'd cycle off to the moat farm and catch a bus from the Seven Sisters to Rippers. Right. And um, Cyril Reeve worked for the for Rippers. Uh, <coughs> Long and sad, you know, Richard Raymond, he worked for Rippers. Um, Billy Reynolds, he worked at Rippers. Uh, else got them? There were several men from. Uh, and Rippers Rippers was a large carpentry. carpentry was carpentry. Place of carpentry. What did they? What did they way. make? You name it. They made it, or did Windows, they make roofs? Mainly windows. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know how many people work for Rippers. So I got a feeling my mother worked for Rippers at one time. Right. Um, so they were probably the biggest employer. Them and the farms were the biggest employers of people in the village, really. Right. How about in the past, the people, reading the girls used to go to the mill at. Courthouse. Halstead, but that closed down. Yeah, I don't remember anybody yep. working at Courthouse. <coughs> My mother used to work at Polytops. Several of the women worked at Polytops in Halstead on the Bluebridge Estate. They made um, tops, plastic tops for, uh, you know, squeezy bottles and things like that. Right. So there was probably four or five people, women from the village worked there. Uh, would they it. get there and back by coach or car or Yeah, somebody used to come and pick them up. Yeah. Somebody that they had a van came and picked them up. Right. Yeah, there were several of them right there. But I don't know who else, where everybody else, but that was basically where everybody worked, really. In factories or on the land still. And when you said, just to jump a bit, sorry, back to something else, you said that you you used to go around this off licence at the top of Nether Hill. Did you ever get into the the, the pheasant or around there or not? Uh, we stage? used to hang around outside it. You know, yeah. It was the red line when I was a kid. Right, right? yeah, yeah. We'd hang around outside, and um, when my dad was in there, we'd be outside in the car for hours on end, like everybody, all other kids at that time, having a, a Coke and a pack of crisps. We only had Golden Wonder and Smiths in them days. We never had any Walkers. Right, I no remember. Walkers, no Walkers crisps in yeah, those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we'd hang around outside, and then the later sort of times when it was a red line, in the sort of early 70s, I'd sort of hang around outside a bit. Never went in there, I don't think. Not really. I didn't. Never used the pheasant really or the red line at all much until, till um, till I met you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> right, bad influence. Um, 